Hello everyone, besides COVID-19, one of the hottest topics around is cryptocurrency. Is the price going up? Is the price coming down? My name is Richard Tan from Success Resources. We are the world leading education provider. Every week I'll be making videos talking about <laughs> cryptocurrency. So if this is a topic that you are interested in and want to know more, I want you to ask you to subscribe right now on the channel. Gently tap the thumbs up and also the notification. Okay, again, we have my good friend and a, an authority in the financial market, Dr. Clement Chang with us here today. Dr. Clement Chang, how are you feeling? Wow, Richard, thank you very much for inviting me back to your show. I'm feeling, feeling really great over the past two days, weekends. <laughs> I, I think we are, we are not doing anything at the time the Bitcoin will start to move. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so today is uh, the beginning of the week and new opportunity to achieve your goals and your dream. Okay, now, so uh, Dr. Clement, the day cross happened on the 19th of June. Uh, Bitcoin price did not plumb, you know, to, to 24,000 or to 20,000 uh, as predicted or as suggested by an, many analysts. However, many analysts caution about another issue that is the grayscale Bitcoin trust, which expired in July. I mean, at least one batch will expire in July and 140,000 Bitcoin are going to be dumped probably, I mean, done by uh, earlier investor uh, to take profit. Many people fear that this, was this will cause the Bitcoin price to plumb. You know? What is your wisdom on this? Can you share with us what is your wisdom on this? Wow, Richard, what a great question to start off the week. <laughs> so let us do a check back first. We always go and look at our 50-day, 200-day and 100-day moving averages. So these are represented in red, green, blue. Red being the 50-day, green is the 200-day, and the blue line is the 100-day crossing in between. So what we have observed is that, of course, we have kissed the death cross, and that was happened on this exact tran transaction right here. And three things for us to remember as a Bitcoin hodlers of the world. Number one, what is the starting price of 1st January 2021 because everything will benchmark from this price. So I'm going to draw a horizontal line across there and then from here, drop down right down to 2021. So step one is to recognize and acknowledge that, okay, 30,000 is the golden mark. Anytime right now this year, it drops below 30,000, every media in the world will announce that, okay, we have hit a negative performance for 2021. So that is the first point. Now, the second point is that, okay, right now we went into the transition. What is the transition? We've been talking about this since the very beginning of our series, and that is the 40,000 to the 30,000 range. So I draw a rectangular box right here. As we can see, holy moly, this first batch right here and the second batch right here, they kind of were playing out together at the same point in time. So we are fluctuating at this range, 30, 40,000 range. We are not officially out of the woods yet. And I want to bring out to the third point, which is right here. So over here, I changed the candle to 15 minute candle. Each candle represents 15 minute time range. And you know, Richard, since we last talked on Friday, <laughs> this is what happens over the weekend. Holy moly. Three double five double zero drop down to 30,000, 30,000 shoot back up to 34,800. So this is the volatility of Bitcoin. And that's the reason why, you know, this is so timely for Richard to invite all of us to really stay close to this window. And let me remind all the audience right now, you are right now at the perfect timing of the 40,000 to that $30,000 range. Any time can happen a breakout at the same time, if you have the guts and the appetite for volatility, this is the kind of money you can make over the weekend. About $5,000 per coin worth of profits waiting for you. Back to you, Richard. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Dr. Clement, just now I, I mentioned about I mentioned about the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, right? And that 140,000 Bitcoin could be dumped into the market, right? So what have you got to say to this, to our viewer? Oh, yes, this is a really, really important point. And I think, you know, Richard, you hit the nail right smack in the bullseye. This, there are three important things for us to know. And first, we take the story right here from Coindesk, one of the official media stories for cryptocurrencies. Grayscale unlocking poses downside risk to Bitcoin price as according to JP Morgan. So there are three things that we really need to know about. And that is where I'm going to zoom in right here and show you all the relevant key points. Step one, the trust itself controls 654,600 Bitcoins itself. So there are two steps to the trust, whereby step one, if you believe in the future prospects of Bitcoin, you can buy the shares that are trading on behalf of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, step one. As a result, the trust controls 654,600 Bitcoins itself, step two. Then step three is the concept of lockdown, which we're going to dive in to understand what exactly is the meaning of lockdown, which is right here. So straight off in this paragraph, it says, the January trench, which was sold to the early investors in January, is scheduled for unlocking next month because they typically have a six-month yeah. lockdown period. So seven minus July. one, uh, six months period. So July is the next month that they're going to release 140,000 number of Bitcoins worth of shares. So Richard, you know what we need to do right now is take out our calculator <laughs> and then please hold it landscape, all right? Well, not, not enough space. So we take 140,000, okay. multiply by, let's say we put it at a low price of Bitcoin trading at $30,000, all right? And the answer that we are holding in front of us is $4.2 billion worth of Bitcoin might be so if every one of the January investor sell it off. And this is the reason why it is so important to come back to this chart. Because this chart earlier on, we plot out these two critical areas, the 30 to 40,000 range. And remember, I plot the first zero right here and the second zero right here. And this is exactly what the shareholders of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, they are thinking about. They might say to themselves, wow, we entered in January, we couldn't sell, we got locked down for six months. July comes here and I'm looking at the same price as what I entered in January. Ah, I got yep. three options. Okay. <laughs> Option number one, do nothing and continue to put my money back into the trust. Congratulations, nothing will happen. Options number two, I'm going to add in more money because I believe price of Bitcoin will shoot out further. I want to put in more money, lock it now. Or option number three, I want to get out. Now, if I want to get out, 4.2 billion will be impacted in the market directly. And that's the reason why they have to alert to us about this particular grayscale Bitcoin trust and how the traders are looking at it. And over here, this chart, I think, tells the story. We're going to cut right here in January. And all the way to down here, and you know, they are probably sitting in kind of a skewed negative zone. And that's the thing we have to anticipate. But that being said, you know, Richard, the cause for alarm is not really that high because typically the appetite for institutional traders buying to the shares, their appetite is very, very high. In fact, much, much more bigger than the standard normal retail investors. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Clement for your insight on this well we uh, certainly uh, hope that the investor will feel like us you know hold or invest more rather than get after all they spend already six months waiting you know and then and that means, that means they waste six months of their time so let's uh, hope that they and you're right money. richard you know the six months there are no other instruments that can give them the kind of returns that bitcoin is showing us in the marketplace. So yeah, they have yeah. to think about, I want to put my money where? Where else can I put? 
There's really not much place else to put because the dollar value is declining because of the high inflation rate and CPI standing at 5%. Yeah. So these are the issues they need to think about. Okay, we also need to remind them if any one of those uh, gray, gray skill, okay, if any one of you gray skill investor are listening, remember over the last 12 years, Bitcoin has, has uh, consistently performed 200% increase every year so remember this okay so make sure that either you put in more money or you don't do anything don't go and dump it and waste <laughs> your time okay second question for you dr clement now many people use the popular binance exchange now binance is all over the place all over the world in every continent every con many countries but in every continent including myself binance has more than 20 times uh trading volume than the if Coinbase, which is listed on the Nasdaq, it is the largest exchange, crypto exchange in the world and 20 times larger than Coinbase. Yeah, but in recent news, as early as last couple of days, uh, says that Binance is being investigated in Japan, is being closed in Ontario and then in UK. Now, question for you, Dr. Clement, is this, is there any impact on the market and uh, should we, uh, investor, ordinary investor, be concerned? Oh, yes, that's a very good question, Richard, because over the weekend, why there was also some talks about Bitcoin pricing dropping to 30,000, and that's because of this. Right now, they have opened up a can of worms. We just have to search for Binance investigation, and we can see straight off which are the territory, territories that are really going after Binance. Number one, you have UK. Number two, as you rightfully pointed out, they have exited out of uh, uh, Canada because following the kind of a sanctions by the US Justice Department and IRS. And number three, Japan is also coming after their ass. <laughs> Next, India is also highlighting them. Now they have yeah. built up a whole onslaught of uh, issues and activities. And we need to bring up three very important points. Number one, what is the advantage for us to continue to, con to trade in Binance? And that goes without any doubt. It has the number one highest liquidity on planet Earth. We tested on several crypto exchanges. No one can come close to the kind of liquidity that Binance offers. Number two, if you are thinking about going to a safe haven like Coinbase that has a read kind of IPO on the US stock market, but the problem with Coinbase is what? If you're a small player, it's fine. But the moment you're a big player, nobody responds to you. They have a terrible, really suck customer service. Okay. That is the number one complaint. And number three, we have perhaps left in one more choice. Rumors is on the Wall Street right now. Gemini perhaps is going to ring the bell before summer ends. And Gemini being the most like uh, customer friendly. In fact, they have an office office in Singapore. But the issue again, you know, I tested on Gemini, the liquidity is nowhere close to Binance. So these are the trade-offs that we need to think about. But at all times, make sure you guys have accounts with all these three exchanges that we talk about so that you have mobility. In any time you want to move, you can move. And that's the beauty of blockchain. Back to you, Richard. Okay. Now on this subject of Binance and uh, regulator questioning them or doing due diligence on them, I felt quite positive about it. The reason why I felt quite positive about it is that, well, at least, you know, in many countries, regulators are now opening their eyes and also study more on the crypto market and make adjustments. So people like Binance and maybe other exchange, they are also making adjustment so that they can comply. So when they can comply, you know, at the end of it, in the long run, everybody benefit. So all this, all this uh, questioning and what are uh, adjustment so that with compliance, so that we can filter out the back head, you know, of the market, etc. And then, you know, legitimate uh, investor or ordinary people can have the opportunity to create wealth. Right with all this proper proper uh, compliance uh, by this exchange, so I'm quite positive about that. 
<laughs> you're, you're absolutely right, Richard. You know, when we read all these news for us as, you know, whales in the market, we always read, read it with a twisted mind. So I want to ask all of you write down twisted mind. <laughs> twisted mind means what? Why would a government waste time, waste resources, go after Binance? Number one, because they are the richest of them all right now. <laughs> you have to go after them to get money out of them. Just like when the US launched an antitrust against Microsoft because back then it was the richest. Just like right now, Europe go after Facebook and Google. Why? Because they got the richest. Step one, there's money to extract from these guys the moment they're under investigation. Step two, once they pay off the fines or whatever imposition that's imposed by the government, they can legitimately run the business with certain constraints around them. Then step three, that's the point in time. For those of us who hang on for the right, you will be rewarded the largest because you didn't chicken out. <laughs> <laughs> good point, doctor. Okay, Kevin, that's a good point. Okay, third question. Third question is uh, quite interesting. Now, two of the world mover of the crypto market, two billionaire giant in the crypto space are going to so-called discuss on Bitcoin. Right. And this is going to happen on the 21st of July. And I am referring to none other than the world richest man, Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey. Now, they are both on different camp. Right? One is a great supporter of Deutsche Coin and the other is supporting Bitcoin. They are market mover, but on the opposite side. Now, please share with us. I know that many of you know all these people, but for some new audience, uh, Dr. Clement, please share with us their background and what do you think will be the outcome of their meeting? Wow, that's a great, great question. First of all, they hold a common thread between them, even though they have different philosophies. We're going to switch over right now to Bitcoin treasuries and under public companies that own Bitcoin. So I'm going to highlight to all of us here in the audience. So we have Tesla standing right here. They bought 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. And then Jack Dorsey is the boss of Square as well as Twitter. Now, they bought uh, close to 277 million worth right now, standing at 0.038%. So they have stakes. They have, they have skin in the game. It's just that the proportion of a Tesla is much, much more higher than Square. Point number one. Now, once we identify point number one, point number two is really this very important date, 21st of July, Again, I want to remind all the audience here, which is exactly one month from now. What is the meaning of 21st July? Let me switch over to my screen right here and kind of give the perspective of 21st July because we are waiting from now till 21st of July for a major event to kick off. And this major event typically in the last event that Elon Musk showed up for Saturday, Saturday Night Live SNL, Leading to event, the price shot up. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, every coin out there, boom, went to the moon. But the moment Elon Musk starts speaking on screen, price collapsed. So we might see a similar sight. When Jack Dorsey fires off the first question to Elon Musk on the program on 21st July, price may drop. But leading towards that, you are looking at this really, really gorgeous a window of opportunity. And of, of course, when I scale it back to point number three right here, this really is about a debate on how together they can protect and save planet Earth. Really, the heart of the question right now is being energy efficient. And that's the reason why Jack Dorsey on one camp says that he's willing to give up Square and Twitter. As long as Bitcoin needs him, he walk out anytime just to serve Bitcoin itself. Wow. Whereby for Elon Musk, he's telling us recently that if someone can demonstrate to him if we can be 50% more energy efficient in mining Bitcoin, he will come back and support the Bitcoin community. So wow. everybody, let's wait for 21st of July, which is exactly one month from now. Wow, Richard, you're so timely. <laughs> okay, that's very interesting. Now, I personally... And very positive and bullish on uh, Bitcoin. I felt that this is one of the best financial opportunity in this decade 
not only for ourselves, but for our next generation. And that's the reason why I'm promoting the Bitcoin, Global Bitcoin Festival. It is a gathering of industrial experts and also enthusiastic community of Bitcoin holders to update, promote, educate, and adoption of Bitcoin. It's a movement. Now, it's a movement for all concerned and all who want to know about the future of their financial affair. So, Dr. Clement, uh, if you have to say something to those who want to know more about the Global Bitcoin Festival, what can you say to them? Wow, this is uh, such an important message because, Richard, when we first started our video series, we started somewhere around here because we spotted this really important window of opportunity and we need to align and rally the movement among our committee members to know that, hey, this box is not going to stay there forever. <laughs> it's going to be just for this moment in time. And that's the reason why Richard's mission to bring the Global Bitcoin Festival to four major continents of the world is important and it is timely because we spotted this window of opportunity. Now, what's going to happen, you guys know, if you've been following closely to our videos and make sure you really subscribe and get notified each time we go on air, is that we are connecting the dots. And how we connect the dots is really linking up to the major wheels. And that's what I call the Richard Tan inner circle. <laughs> you want to get close to a wheel, this is the moment of time you have this single opportunity. So I want to encourage you quickly go and register get close, hang tight, hang on tight with us for the ride because you'll be rewarded richly. This is where everybody spotted this window. You missed this window, too bad, it's gone. And that's why, please sign up. <laughs> okay, so there's a link below for the Global Bitcoin Festival. You click the link for more information and sign up so that we can be in the community to update, to encourage and to promote the movement of Bitcoin. So thank you once again, Dr. Clement. And to every one of you out there, I want to wish you well, health and happiness in your life and see you at the next video. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much.